Going on here, joining us now to discuss is Monica Crowley, who's a former Assistant Secretary of the Treasury for Public Affairs, and Dan Henninger, Deputy Editor of the Wall Street Journal editorial page, and Fox Business contributor, two great Americans and dear friend. Monica Crowley, I wouldn't really say this was a great G7, would you? No, I would not. And you know, when President Trump would attend the G7, G20, other international fora, he promoted American values and he fought fiercely to protect and advance America's interests. What we saw from President Biden at this G7 was not leadership, Larry, it was surrender. We are now in full-fledged America last, and it does seem now to be back to the bad old days of destructive globalism, which we saw during the Obama years, and certainly since every president since Reagan, with the exception of President Trump. We saw all kinds of globalist maneuvers on climate change, which President Biden agreed to. We saw a global corporate minimum tax, which is going to be incredibly destructive, and America's workers and consumers and shareholders are going to end up paying the price for that. And we saw a tax on tax, tech, which is essentially a, a unilateral tax on America's great iconic companies like Microsoft, Amazon, Google, and so on. So we saw Biden basically acquiesce to all of this, putting this country last and not yeah. standing up for America's yeah, interests. You, you know, we may not love all those companies. I, there's nothing wrong with Microsoft. We may not love all those companies, but we don't want foreigners to tax them. That was a point Trump always made. Trump didn't like those companies that much either. But he said foreigners have no right to tax them. Americans have right to tax them. So, Dan Hanninger, um, are you glad that we're back as a member of the club, a willing and cooperative member of the club? Don't you think this is just great progress? Yeah, isn't it, though, Larry? <laughs> yeah, that remark by uh, French President Emmanuel Macron jumped out at me as well, that we're back in the club. And I, my first thought was, what club? is he talking about? And I'm sure the conventional spin says it's multilateralism and diplo speak and the rest of it. No, I think what he's talking about is the social welfare spending club that France and Germany have been leading since at least the end of World War II. And you know that famous saying, Larry, of Tip O'Neill's, all politics is local. Well, Joe Biden may be in Europe, but he's not forgetting the fact that back home, he has the biggest domestic spending and tax agenda on the table since perhaps LBJ's Great Society in 1965. That's what he wants to get done. He just said that in the press conference there. We were listening to it. He attacked President Trump, and he said there's nothing more important in America today than enact our agenda. Well, that agenda, Larry, is pushing us towards European levels of social welfare spending. And the only way you can support that, as the Europeans well know, is with their levels of taxation. And I think that's the reason for pushing something like that corporate minimum tax that Monica just mentioned. Uh, the, uh, they have got to have the money. And Joe Biden is enlisting the Europeans in creating a minimum tax on corporations so that he can raise the corporate tax in the United States. We're on our way to joining the club. Germany, welfare, Italy, Spain. Welcome. Yeah, I want, I'm going to extend this sec just for a little bit. I want both of you to weigh in on two more things real quick. But Dan Henninger, ser serious question. Is Biden and the Democrats, you know, Biden now and the Democratic left left, are they going to take us more socialist than Europe? I mean, after all, middle Europe, right, central Europe is rather more capitalist. Right. And it's Western Europe that's socialist. Right. But even they may not be as socialist. I'm asking a serious question. Do the Bidens and the Bernie Sanders and the whole crowd, the progressive left or the left, are they want to take us to the left of Europe? I think they would if they could, Larry. And the reason is that unlike the Europeans, which they're actually fairly cynical about these things, they do understand what socialism is. I think here in the United States, for Bernie Sanders, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, the squad, it's kind of an abstraction. They don't really understand what it is and how it works. They just run it under the heading of fairness. Mm. And they are willing to do anything to get there. And that includes, at the moment, defunding not just the police, but the Pentagon, the military of the United States. Elizabeth Warren was just explicit about that, saying 
the proposed defense budget of Joe Biden's, which I think increases defense spending by about 1.4 percent, which is a cut in inflationary terms, they are willing to do that. And, uh, you know, that would put us in a very, very dangerous position vis-a-vis -vis our primary competitors, China and Russia. Well, Monica, I'm going to close with you. And uh, please be brief. You know the game. But I want to just ask you from, you know, you and I, we worked in the Trump administration. Can you imagine, this is a serious question, can you imagine the Treasury Secretary you served under, I served with, Steve Mnuchin, can you imagine him crusading in Europe to let Europeans set higher taxes on American companies? Now, you and I know that President Trump, President Trump vocally said he would never do that. But can you imagine a Treasury Secretary? Because after all, these companies are American companies. They don't have, Europe doesn't have big tech companies. I mean, I don't know what they have. They have a couple of big car companies and they got a champagne company. But the rest of that, it's, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a traveler's destination and so forth. But can you imagine that? Our treasure, Mnuchin, okay? Straight no. lace, Steve Mnuchin, right? No. Hard working guy. Uh, no. He, would he do that? No, he would never do it. And in fact, he did the exact opposite, which, which was put America first and not globalize American tax policy. And, you know, to your original question to Dan about what they understand and what their objective is, remember when President Obama talked about the fundamental transformation of the nation? Mm. He essentially meant this, which is reshape the relationship between oh. the government, the economy, and the individual. So that's their grand project here. And it's not because they don't understand capitalism. They do very well. They just reject it. They just it. reject it. And now they are going... That's a good they point. just reject it. And now this is essentially Obama's and third term to try to remake and re-enter engineer the economy right. in ways that they but couldn't you know, complete during you know Obama's what? first eight years. Uh, this is another segment, Monica Love, but they're trying to transform American foreign policy, and it's just as bad. But we, we, that's another segment. We'll have you both back uh, to talk about that part. Implicit in this G7 stuff is a restructuring and transformation of American foreign policy, and it is all bad. That's the Iranian piece and the Russian piece and the pipeline piece. Anyway, this was the Crowley piece and the Henniger piece, and I thank you very much.